welcome to Reward for Engagement. I'm Gus, with me here is Damien. Today, we are going to explain to you how you reward your users and increase their engagement, and also reward them to uh, bring more friends to your app or game. We are going to talk a lot about Firebase today. So if you don't know what Firebase, it's a set of tools that Google provides to you that help you develop better apps. Apps with less crashes, apps with better performance, more flexible, and also help you grow your audience, getting more users or players. And if you are into this kind of thing, you also can earn money with that. And Damien, explain better our plan today. Cool. So one challenge that every app developer or game developer finds is to get more players or more users in their, in their app or game. And one study that we made about a year ago, we found out that 52% of people find out about new apps or new games from friends or colleagues' recommendations. And after that comes the App Store, and after that comes search engine and ads, etc. But the main thing is uh, word of mouth, friends and colleagues' recommendation. So we will focus on that and make that experience of sharing an app with friends and colleagues the best possible. The way we do that is, uh, is by implementing a referral mechanism. A referral mechanism is a circle that basically starts with someone that clicks on an invite button uh, and share a link through a messaging app or a social network or SMS, email, whatever. Later on, someone that will click on that link, install an app, open the app, and see some message saying like, hey, you got invited by the name of the sender of the invite. Uh, please log in to get a reward or something like that. Later on, the user will log in or do an action in your app or game, and we will reward both the sender of the invite and the recipient of the invite. Finally, as we are giving a reward, we need to think about uh, uh, preventing fraudulent patent of people that create fake, fake accounts to claim the reward multiple times without inviting real users. So we will think about that. OK. Uh, without any further ado, let me introduce Avetis from uh, Rockbyte, who integrated that referral mechanism in their game. And they will tell you, he will tell you a bit more about uh, their experience. Thank, Thank you, Avetis. Hi, everyone. Well, my name is Avetis. I'm from Rockbyte Games, and uh, I'm the developer of game Deep Town. That's the game we're going to be talking about. Uh, let me. Deep Town uh, is basically a game about monsters, self-replicating robots, mining, crafting, and science. Uh, it's kind of a science fiction game about uh, where you kind of manage an underground town and uh, build factories. Deep Town has, uh, was launched March 15th, uh, it, two months ago. Uh, just in the first month, we already had about 200,000 daily active users and uh, over 2 million installs, very engaged players. Uh, now, in Deep Town, there are things like rare items. And rare items can be only get from legendary chests. Lucky thing is, you can get a legendary chest by inviting a friend. And the cool part is that if you invite a friend, they will get a chest as well. So here's how it works. Uh, the, uh, whoever wants to invite a friend, they just have to click on the invite button. And when that happens, we use Firebase dynamic links to generate a special URL. Then we use Google Share Dialog to show some options like send email or uh, use social media to share that link. So now our player can just go ahead and share that. And this is how it looks like on the other side for a lucky friend. So they get kind of uh, the share link, very nice and beautiful. They click on it. They can uh, then go to Google Play, download the game, play the game. Uh, and when that happens, uh, we actually take no action. Instead of just, we just remember that this person was invited by a friend. And we let them play the game. Now, after they spend some time in the game and they play the tutorial and things like that, uh, this is the perfect time for us to take action. Uh, we, now, we can freely use the Firebase real-time database uh, to perform the uh, magic of notifying everyone uh, that the reward has been given. Uh, that allows us to skip uh, making all the hustle of like having servers, maintaining servers. Brutal database that does it for us. So when both of the players get kind of notification, they can open the chest, uh, see the nice animation of the chest opening, and they can uh, see what's inside. That's pretty simple. Uh, and the cool part is you can't abuse that because uh, everyone has to kind of play the game for several minutes, uh, and only then they both, both of them will get reward. 
Uh, in DeepTown, we used Firebase a lot. So as I told you, we used real-time database uh, in order to uh, fix our server problem and not, not have to maintain any servers. Uh, we used analytics uh, in order to measure our KPIs, do some funnels, things like that. Uh, we used remote config to A-B test our numbers uh, on shop and things like that. that. That really helped us a lot by increasing the revenue, by the way. Uh, we use crash reporting to maintain the whooping 4.8 rating on Google Play Store. And we also use notification to send out uh, uh, you know, notifications to people with seasonal events and, and, and such. Uh, finally, about some numbers. Rewarded invites are great. And uh, they're so good that our players love uh, sending them out. It's 10% of our entire player base uh, sent out an invite to their friend. But that's not the best part. Uh, it's not just about gaining new users. It's about quality of users you get. Uh, uh, with the statistics we measured, we can see that uh, the invited people uh, are to, more likely to spend time in game. They're actually spending 22% more time in the game. And that is resulting in a 15% uh, revenue increase uh, for, a, for each user. So that's pretty cool. I guess that's it for uh, sorry. <laughs> that's it for uh, Deep Town. Thank you very much, Damien. Thank you very much. Uh, Thanks, Habitif. everyone. Bye. Okay. So the plan for today is we prepared a small uh, demo application and we are going to integrate that referral mechanism in the game. Can we switch to the phone, please? Okay, so that's the demo app in our current state. Like, there is no referral mechanism just yet. Like, it's just a simple game where you can play. Oh no. That starts badly. Okay, it's just a simple game. Okay. Let me force close it. So you can log in, in the game for, with Google signing, but Firebase also support like Twitter, Facebook, etc. And then you can play the game, which is a, a game where you need to zap droids uh, using the right uh, color at the bottom. It lasts 20 seconds. I am not too good at that game, but it doesn't really matter much. Okay. So when you finish the game, you get a high score that gets synchronized with the real-time database. I didn't beat my high score this time. I also have a username at the at the at the top, you can see sister demo there. All of that is stored in real-time database. So in, in that, uh, can we switch back to the slides, please? Sorry. Perfect. Um, so in that game, we already have some part of Firebase already integrated. We have analytics to better understand what people are doing in the game. We have crash reporting that should have catched that bug. Uh, we, <laughs> we have remote config that let us uh, tweak some part of the gameplay. Like, for example, the current uh, game lasts 20 seconds. But server side, we can switch it to be 30 seconds very easily. And we have uh, authentications and real-time database together that let us uh, like signing in the game and create a user profile in the real-time database that store our progress from one device to another. OK. So when, when we say we have authentications, we have two parts of authentication in the game. First, we have anonymous logging when you first launch the game, because we don't want to ask uh, players to sign in, in the game right away. Uh, and later on, we let them switch to Google signing. Anonymous logging is, is quite cool, because it gives us an, a user ID from the start, which lets us store the user progress in the cloud from the start. And for example, if you have an anonymous, logger, uh, sorry, an anonymous, anonymous users that contact your customer support asking for help, you can display the user ID somewhere in the game, and you can see his save, his uh, progress, and help him directly from, from the database. It also gives us the same cut path, uh, because we always have a user ID. We always save in the DB, no matter if you are logged in anonymously or uh, with a real, call, re real um, uh, authentication mechanism. So it, it helps us having a simple cut path uh, in the game. So we also have a gameplay limitation in the game. Like every free-to-play game, you usually have a user like a coins, current virtual currency, or some sort of energy mechanism. In our case, we implemented a dummy limitation, which is you can only play three times every seven hours. And that will also be our reward for the referral mechanism. If you invite one friend, you will be able to play four times. If you invite five friend, uh, two friends, you will be able to play five times, etc. Uh, in your game, it might be giving coins, it might be giving energy, or whatever. 
And to implement that limitation, we need to store some information in the user profile uh, in the, in the real-time database. So in the top left corner, uh, top left corner, you can see user1, which is our user ID in our database. Under it, we have two different sets of scope. One is private field, and the second one is public field. Under private field, we store information that are, sorry, under pri uh, Go back. Under private field, we store information that are written and written by the currently logged in user. And under public field, we store information that are written by the currently logged in user and read by anyone. Uh, like in under public field, you will find information such as your high score, which is a public information, your username on the last time you logged in, so we can show you if your friends are active in the game. Under private fields, we store information such as your authentication token that we will use uh, later on in, uh, in our server um, implementation, your FCM token to send notifications to players, but also how many times you played in the last seven hours, which is last play. Here is the start of the seven hours period, and number of play is one, with meaning that I just played once in the last seven hours. That will let us enforce uh, the limitation, which is three play in seven hours. Okay, and about the referral mechanism that we are going to implement, we have three different actors there. We have the sender of the invite, the recipient of the invite, and Firebase. When the sender of the invite click on the, an invite button, we are going to query Firebase to get a dynamic link, then we are going to share it using a system intent on Android. We are going to, uh, the recipient is going to accept, uh, click on the dynamic link, receive a custom onboarding, Later on, he will log in in the game. At that point, we are going to give the reward, which means updating the DB, crediting the reward to uh, both the recipient and the sender of the invite, and then finally sending them a notification to both of them, so they know they received something. The first thing we are going to use is dynamic link. Dynamic link is just a smart URL which contains a payload. In our case, the payload will be the user ID of the sender of the invite, so that if Luis sends me an invite, um, the, the guy that clicks on the dynamic link will know the user ID of Luis and be able to read his public information. The cool part of dynamic link is that if you have the app already installed, it will launch the app when you click on it. If you don't have the app installed, you will be redirected to the Play Store or the App Store if you're on iOS. You will be able to install the app, and when you launch it, we still have access to the payload. We don't lose that information. Okay. So now, let's see with Luis how we are going to click a, obtain a dynamic link from Firebase and share it with an intent. Thank you. Nice. Uh, so now we'll start with implementing things. Uh, just a caveat here, we said it was going to be live coding, but it's too much content, so we are not going to do live coding so we can show everything. Sorry for that. Let's start from the Java part, from the client side. We are going to create a dynamic link by hand. This is just the beginning. And I'll just create a string and concatenate multiple values. I'll explain to you in details what we're doing here. I know it's a very long link, but let me explain details. The first part we have here is a domain. This 5x you see there, you can copy from your dynamic link dashboard on Firebase console. So if you create a project, you have that code for yourself already. Every project has, uh, of course, one different. And you can just put it there. After this, you need a link, a fallback link. Why do you need this? For example, if you send an uh, invite to someone and your friend open it on a desktop uh, on his browser, this is where he's going to be directed to. If he opens in, on Android or on iOS, then it's going to be directed to the app or to App Store, Play Store, depending if it's installed or not. After the, the fallback link, we can add as many parameters as we want. For our use case for the referral mechanism, we need a user ID. It's the sender. It's the person that's inviting someone. So that's what we are adding here. You can add as many parameters as you want. And you have access to this later when your user opens the app from the link. You have access to all of these parameters. Aside from the parameters you might use for your for infrastructure, for keeping the flow, you also add some other special dynamic link parameters that these in case here are the, we call social tags. And it means that whenever you share this, there is going to be a special title, a special description, and a thumbnail. So it makes the link uh, prettier. It makes more, you look at something and it's nice. And 
this is how it is. This to share, it's just the typical share intent from Android. I'm not going to explain because you all know all of this, but I'm just using the dynamic link there, passing this string. We have an example here. So from our small game we've just seen, we can click on invite. From invite, we can choose where we want to share. There, I just remember, I just showed the code to share something. That's, it will trigger that share using something. I'm going to use Google Keep because I'm lazy. And here is the link that we just created. It's over there. There's a very long link. And when we save and click on Google Keep, that's what we see. So that's what's being shared. That's what your friend would see on the messaging app, on the social network, whatever you send this. And this, this looks very good for me. So this is working, but yeah. Yeah, no, it's working, but it's not so great, right? You see the, the link is very, very huge, and you barely see the, the social tag at the bottom. And I'm sure we can do better. Like, the idea is that the default dynamic link is very long, too long, and not visually appealing. The good news is that we can, we can get a short version of it. It's, it's totally doable. The bad news is that it requires some server code. So let's see how Luis is going to shorten the link. OK, let's do more work. Thank you, Damien. Let's do the part of obtaining the link from the Firebase server. Uh, the good thing here is I don't want you guys to spin a server to create a machine, Docker, Kubernetes, all of these kind of things. I don't want to talk about this today. It's a lot of work, and you don't really need for this task. So we are going to use something different. We're going to use Cloud Functions for Firebase. Cloud Functions for Firebase is a way to write code that will run on Firebase servers, Google servers, and you don't need to worry about provisioning to load balance. You don't need to worry about anything. You just write your function, and it will be fired in, uh, whenever an event occurs. And this event can be a write on the real-time database, can be whenever a user authenticates or whenever he logs out, can also be whenever there is a conversion event on the analytics, can be like if there is a HTTP call to a specific URL, that's a kind of we can create a webhook from here. So it makes creating server-side code easier, like much, much easier. Today, we're going to talk a lot about Cloud Functions, and it's in JavaScript. So bear with me. Let's start with the first one to create a dynamic link. And I'll go through all the steps with you. Don't worry. First, we need to export a function. We are, this, so just a, as a heads up, this is, you put this on one JavaScript file. That's a, the function. We are going to start one exporting. It's going to, the name is create dynamic link. So this is also going to be the URL we are going to call. We are defining that this is a HTTP call, HTTPS call. And from there, we are going to do some tasks in order. First, we are going to validate a header. We are going to then, after validating the header, we are going to create a dynamic link. After we create the dynamic link with the result of that, we are going to save to the user's profile. And then we return like 200 if it's everything OK, or unauthorized if it's, there's a, any kind of error during the way. Let's take a look on validate header. Why am validating the header? I said this is a web hook, so anyone could access this our URL from any browser. And I don't want everyone to just access my, my endpoint. I don't want that. I want to validate and make sure that only the users from my app are accessing this endpoint. It makes I, I restrict the use of my, my, my resources. Uh, how do I do that? Whenever I make this call from the client, I will put on the header of this, this call, I will put a bearer and a auth token, separated by space. What I'm doing here, I'm verifying if there, oh, I have the bearer. Nice. Let's split it and get uh, the ID, the, this auth token. After I have this auth token, I'll call a method from the framework, admin.auth verify ID token. I don't need to write that. I just call the framework method. And it will return to me the decoded token and the ID of the user. So if I'm user one, whenever I call this, when I get here, the decoded ID token dot user ID will be user one. And then I can use that on my next step. That's create a dynamic link with the user. To create a dynamic link, before doing that, we are going to talk about another uh, specific uh, from Firebase, from, for Cloud Functions for Firebase. Sometimes I deploy my code, and I want to change some of the values that it, this code is using without having to redeploy everything. And there is also other cases that I don't want to commit to my repository some keys 
or some very specific values for my code. I don't want to write a, ver a constant with a key. I don't want to write a constant with an uh, API URL because it might change. And I want to customize this as much as possible. So that's where we can use the Firebase client tools. Here, it's a command line. So there's a lot of environments. We talk about Java code. There was JavaScript code. Now we're talking command line. In the command line, I can just set a variable like Firebase uh, dynamic link dot REST API endpoint. That's the REST API from Firebase to create a dynamic link for me. I also have to I want also to define a domain. The domain I just told about you, it's the 5x there. You get this code for your dash from your dashboard. And finally, I also define a web API key that I also get from my Firebase console. Here, that's very important because you don't want to commit your repository keys because anyone could find that there, and it's really not safe. So you can just define this on environment, and whenever your function is executing, you have access to that. And that's exactly what we're going to do here in Create Dynamic Link for User. First thing I'm going to do is functions.config, and then get one of the values. And with that, I will start to concatenate and create my call, uh, create the URL to call for my uh, REST API, for my endpoint. I'll just add the web API key, of course. I'll get the domain because I'm going to use on my request. I'm going to make a, re a post request to Firebase servers now. And I'm going to pass this body here. It's a lot of code. I'm not going to enter in details. But the important thing you have to, pay, to look here is suffix option short. And that's exactly why Damien was complaining. He wants to make the link shorter. This is the only option you have to send, and it will create a short link for me. That's the return of that call. As you can see, there's short link. You, a user could remember that by head. You can read and remember by head. You just remember like, I don't know, 10 characters. And the, the preview link is the other link we created by hand, just in case you want for some, whatever reason. So this is the return from that call. And this return we're going to use on save link on database. Saving link, I just put this on the user's profile. To save on the database, I won't take too much time. I'll just create a map that's a path on the database and a value. With this, I'll just update. The map here is users, user ID, public fields, dynamic link. And I just put the value short link. And then I'll just save to the database using a specific construct that's admin.database. Why I'm using this? Because I don't want to worry about who is calling this, who is executing. I don't want to worry about that. I want to save to the database. Whenever I do that, I have superpowers. So I, of course, I can't overdo that. I can't keep doing to avoid mistakes. But on this situation, I just want to save on this user's profile this value. We will use this more often later. And we are just updating what we just created, the map. After that, we just return. Uh, we just return the save link, uh, the, the body, sorry, to the user. Return 200, that's OK. So the call from the client receives this dynamic link, and he just show in the share dialog that we've just seen. And it's something like this. Uh, this is what we had before. The result of that call now is this one. So maybe Damien is happy now. And we'll Much give better. Me, nice. You'll give me less work. OK, so now that we share the dynamic link with someone, let's see how we just implement that small box, which is custom onboarding, how we get the value uh, from the dynamic link, the user ID from the dynamic link. When you implement an Android app, uh, everyone knows that you have a lifecycle. And the first method that is called in your lifecycle is the onCreate in your activity. So that code is executed in the onCreate of your activity. So it's Java code that is executed client side. We call an API from App Invite that let us register a callback. That callback. That callback will, will be executed every time that the app is triggered for a dynamic, from a dynamic link. The first thing we do in that callback, the first if, is to make sure that we actually have data in the dynamic link. We have something we to, like, there is parameters in it. And then we get the intent that was used to trigger the app with the result that get invitation intent. From that, we get the user ID, the sender ID. Uh, so that's uh, the parameter we put in our dynamic link. And that sender ID, we give it to a function that I am not going to go in details, which is show high from sender. The only thing that does that function is, first, it takes the user ID 
it reads the public field from that user ID from the real-time database and finds the nickname of the user. And then it displays a pop-up that just say, hey, you got invited by Luis. Please log in to get a reward. That's the only thing it does. Let's see how it looks like. So I had a link that uh, Luis sent me earlier today. If I click on it, that should open my app. And that time it worked. I have a pop-up saying, uh, welcome to Bugdroid, which is the name of the app. Uh, sis sister, which is a uh, nickname of Luis, uh, left you a gift. When I click on OK, I get redirected to the game. And well, here, the idea is now to implement that if I click on logging, I get a reward. But right now, we haven't implemented anything yet. So let's see how we are going to give the reward to the players. Can we switch back to the slides, please? OK, so now we are going to implement that huge box that contain logging to Google, um, uh, to Google logging, updating the real-time database, saying that the user has converted, he has logged in, crediting the reward to both the sender of the invite and the recipient of the invite, and finally sending a notification to both uh, players. Next is Luis to tell us more about notifications and cloud messaging. Nice. Nice. So after the user accepts an invite and signs in, how does the sender know that, oh, a friend accepted an invite? Or how do I know that I received anything? We are going to send a message straight from our server. We are going to use cloud messaging. Well, cloud messaging is part also of Firebase. And you can send messages straight from your server to specific devices, to topics, to audience, to a, a bunch of number of people if you want. So the idea is that you can, it's like sending a notification, hey, there's something for you here. Come back to the game, play a little bit more, you got some more coins. This is an API that we can call from the command line, or there is also a console on Firebase that you can just type it if you just want to test, or if you're marketing, people want to try a little bit. And usually, what people have to do in the past, you have to have your own server, your own backend, just to call a command line. You have just to do that, of course, to do some integration, but you had to have a server for that. Today, we are going to implement that using Cloud Functions, and it is going to be automated. You don't need to worry about most of the, the work. Let's start by understanding the database and what we need from it to do its work. This is almost the same database snapshot we saw before, but I have some fields here that are important for me now. First of them is anonymous ID, and this value is written here when I, I start as an anonymous user, as Damien told us before. Whenever I sign in, I keep this anonymous ID. I copy this from my previous node I had here in the database. I copy it here. And it's important because I'm going to use the fact that I'm copying this value here to trigger functions for me. The other value that's important is you invited by. So user 1 was invited by user 0 to the game. And I, so with this, I can keep track of who invited who. And this is, of course, a one time only. I can only be invited by one person. And later, I can be invited by someone else. Only the first one <coughs> gets the reward. Sorry. Let's, take back, let's look back at the code and understand how we should implement that. We are going to create another cloud function now. We can use the same file we just used before. We just put it below. And, but this is a little bit different. We are going to call this validate used invite. And it's not a webhook anymore. It's a database event. So whenever there is an update on that path, users, user ID, uh, pri private fields, anonymous ID, I'm going to react to that whenever there's any uh, write or delete there. I'm going to react to that and do something on my server. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to get the values from, from the parameters, get the private fields for that user. Remember, I just, saw, just show you guys private fields, anonymous ID I had invited by. I'll get private fields from the database. It's just a query. Not going to waste your time with that. And then I'm going to activate an invite. Activate an invite, it's the system understanding, hey, this person was invited by this other one, and both of them have to receive a, a gift. That's what I'm going to do here. Let's take a look at an activate invite. So I have private fields, and I have recipient ID. After this, I, have, uh, I, I know from private fields, I know who is the invited by. And I know he's the sender. And I'll just use the admin database reference that I explained to you guys previously. I'll write to this user's sender ID admin invited. I'll write the map that's recipient ID and true. 
I know it's a lot of things, but I'll show you the, the snapshot of the database will be much easier to understand. Send your ID, sorry, skip that. Let's take a look on the database and see how it is. Here, remember, user one, anonymous ID is down there, invited by. Whenever the invites that user one send are start to get used by people, these, whenever user clicks on the invite, opens the app, and signs in, what happen is I will start to write on admin invited. I will start to write values here. So what we can understand here is that user two, three, and four, they were invited by user one. They opened the app, and they signed in. That's what's written here. And I will use this information to continue the flow here. With this in mind, now we have to give a reward. There's no reward yet. Nobody is happy yet. We're just doing backend to keep track of things. Oh, but I explained Cloud Messenger already, sorry. Let's take a look on code to give rewards. First, it's a database function again. And now that's where things is going to happen, right? So bear with me. It's long, but the idea is that I'm doing the same thing for two users. So technically, there's a lot of duplicate code here. We are calling this give rewards, and it's also a database function. I'll react to whenever a user, uh, there's a write on users, user ID, admin, invited, recipient ID. Whenever I write there, I'm going to get user data for the sender and the recipient. So the two persons that are involved in this transaction, I'll get their data so I can start to send a notification and later increase the reward. I, I won't explain get user data because it's just a query. I have the user ID, it's just a query. So let's take a look on send notification to sender and then increase reward. The send notification to recipient and increase reward is exactly the same. So don't worry about it now. To send a notification to sender, I have the sender data and the recipient data. Why do I need both of them? From the sender, I need his FCM token that's on his database. So I need that to address him. That's a way to send a notification. You need this token. And from the recipient, I need his name. Because whenever we send a notification, I want to send a notification that has some kind of meaning, that whenever the user looks at, sees that on the notification tray, he has some information already. I don't want to send, hey, there's something for you. Hey, there, click here. That it's, has no meaning. I want to explain to him, Damien used one of your invites. Both of you got a gift. Oh, nice. I got something. I'll click here. I'll come back to the game. That, that's, the, that's where we engage our users. That's the key. After that, I'm going by calling my uh, utility function here, send notification. I just create a payload, and then I call What's the, the important part from here is admin.messaging.send to device. That's from the framework, and that's how you send a notification to our users. So it's one line. It's quite simple, right? So you can do this from your function, <coughs> and you can do all kinds of integrations here. Let's take a look on increase reward. I won't take too much time here. Again, admin database. I'll count. I'll get the current count of rewards you have, and just add one. Uh, let's see the database, how it is now. Uh, here, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> sorry. Here, my reward count is three. That's what we should expect whenever I add to the invited node. Every time I add someone there, it will increase the reward. There is a couple of advantages of doing that. One is, if I want to test, I can just create a user five put true there, and the function will execute. Even if I execute, I, I put this value direct on the database. I can bypass the app and everything. If I want to give reward to a specific user, I can come here and change, and the function will work. So it reacts from, even from the app or from if you write the database yourself. Let's take a look on how it is, on the, how it works. So here, Damien was anonymous. When he clicks, and, and then he says, oh, I'm Damien Mabin. He clicks on that. What will happen is that uh, when he signs in, I will receive a notification saying, hey, someone used your invite. And he will also receive a notification saying, you also receive an invite, uh, a gift. Sorry, not invite, a gift. And that's how you give the gift. You send a notification. It's shown there. And we can still improve what we have now. Damien. 
Well, so until, until now, what we did is just put in the, in the real-time database some things that say reward count equals three, but nothing else, right? Client side, like you still need to write the code that is going to look in the DB, read the amount of uh, reward count you have, and decide if the user can play or cannot play. Um, as, you, as you all know, uh, it's fairly possible that people will try to tamper with your code client side and will try to remove the limitations that you implemented client side. So as much as possible, you should try to enforce that limitation server side when you can. Uh, I know like some games are playable only online, so they have the logic of the game running on the, on the server. That's one solution. But there is a whole range of gray area where you can either have all the logic uh, client side and hope no one will tamper with your code, or be in the middle where you have part of the logic server side and part of the logic client side. What I decided here is to have part of the logic uh, client side and server side. And I did that by using security rules in, in Firebase. So we just saw Cloud Functions, which is a way for you to execute Node.js uh, JavaScript function in a, in a Node.js environment server side. That can contain a lot of logic, as we saw, like we read elements from, from part of the DB, we send notifications, etc. But we also have something called security rules in Firebase that let us enforce that when the client comes and try to write something in the DB, he's doing something that he legitimately has the right to do. On one, side, on, one, sorry, on one side, we have cloud functions, which is like very, very flexible. On the other side, we have security rules, which are less flexible, but are free to use. So what I did is, in the real-time database, if you remember, we had the node for the number of times you played in the last uh, seven hours and when started that seven hours period. I just implemented a set of security rules that say that if someone come and try to write that he played minus one time, that won't work. If we try to write that he played three times uh, instead of, and he already had played like four times before, for example, that won't work. If he tried to change the seven hours period, while seven hours haven't spent since the last time uh, he, he started the seven hours period, that also won't work, which means that the server will validate that what you write in the DB is correct. And if the write succeeds, then I will let uh, client side the user play. If the write fail, uh, I won't let the user play. The cool part is if I decide later on that I want to give, I don't know, five free runs per day, I can just change my security rules, and that will automatically, like the client side, will automatically get five free um, play per seven hours. There is one little catch uh, that I mean we can also use. Um, Firebase have a Java SDK, but it also have a C++ SDK, and implementing games is usually done in C++ by most of the people out there, and you can use both the Java SDK and the C++ SDK together. You can implement part of your authentication me mechanism in Java if you want. You can implement part of the logic for limitation in using Firebase C++ SDK. And you might know that uh, C++ tends to be harder to tamper with. Like decompiling C++ is no fun, and recompiling it even less. So that will also help you enforce limitation. OK, so that's Luis now that's going to tell us where to go next if you want so to learn more nice. about Firebase. That that's what we want to explain to you guys. I hope you enjoyed a lot. And if you want to learn more about Firebase, there's a lot of very nice talks today here. There's the next one. About, it's talking about integrating machine learning and the cloud functions. You've just learned all everything about cloud functions, can improve from there. There's also how to better architect your database, how to test better your functions. And there is an amazing session at 3.30 that will show you lots of recipes that you can easily implement in your app just by using the, the uh, Firebase, and then you can improve your app easily. With that, uh, just one more detail. All the code we've seen here, the Java part, the server part, the rules, the command lines, everything will be on GitHub by next week, maybe the other. So uh, just ping us if you need that. We'll post it so you can come back to our office. And what I want to take it from this talk, all you need to take from this talk is whenever you get your office on Monday, and then your boss will come to you and say, OK, you were there enjoying the event. Everyone was happy. What, what did you learn? What can you add to our app today? You can just take, hey, I can reward our users for engagement. Boom. There you have your promotion. So you are welcome. Don't and leave just that, j j just now. Like, we still have one gift to give you. Well, actually, it's my gift. Uh, if you 
yeah, if you click on, if you get that link, you can download the game from Avetis, and that will also reward me because that's my link. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank everyone. you very much.